Maybe right now you're asking the question, what about hallucinations, John? You've heard it said that Jesus really did die, but later the disciples had hallucinations in which they thought they saw Jesus. This is what they meant when they said they saw Jesus. Well, Dr. Habermas answers this question. Listen. Let me take a case in point here. Let's pick not just some straw man and take some weakling theory. Let's take the hottest naturalistic theory in the 19th century. And the hypothesis says that Jesus died all right, but he didn't really rise from the dead. The disciples saw hallucinations. We know hallucinations are out there. That's it right here. They saw hallucinations. Looking only at this list, notice, number one, the disciples had experiences that they believed to be appearances of the risen Jesus. Paul said these experiences occurred in groups. Hallucinations are not contagious. They don't occur in groups. Second, hallucinations are fairly rare. When you're talking about groups of people, you've got hard-headed Peter, soft-hearted Mary, soft-hearted John. My point is you've got different people, different times, different places. Paul says individual here, individual there, 500 out there. He appears at different places, and it's not likely and I'm being very conservative there, that all these people would be just in the right frame of mind to see hallucinations. Further, they were transformed. Hallucinations don't transform. In fact, I know of a man who's done some research personally with hallucinations, and what the, what the people said was, I changed my mind when my friend said, A, these things don't happen, and B, we didn't see them. Guess what? That would apply to the resurrection above all. Dead men don't rise, and we didn't see them unless they did. So the transformations show that they really believed what they taught. And what about the Apostle Paul? He wouldn't be in the right frame of mind to see an hallucination. I mean, the man was walking to Damascus, he says, to carry out threats against believers. Now, does that man want to see the resurrected Jesus? And then you've got James, Jesus' brother, an insider. What would you think if your son, uh, if your brother, were getting this kind of attention around the world? And James says... I don't believe. He's a skeptic. And critics usually admit that. But is James in the right frame of mind to see hallucinations? I don't think so. These are some of the problems, just what, maybe a half dozen right there, that come from just that list of a short list of facts that we already gave. Let's try an illustration of what I'm talking about here. Let's say we're surrounded by a group of people. And over on this side of the conservatives, they give me all the facts in the New Testament. Obviously, Jesus was raised. You get to the next group, and then I'll give you most of them. Jesus was raised. You go over and further and further over till you get to the left, and over here are people who will say, I'll give you 10 or 12. I'm saying I'll work with, with those 12, or I'll work with only four. But for the person who says, I'm going to give you zero facts, you work up to each one of them. You give the data for each one. And the conclusion is, these facts alone refute the naturalistic theories on the one hand and provide the best evidences for the resurrection.